Hello and welcome to a quick video uh, for a Kerbal Space Program. I spent the weekend trying to put together a instrument landing approach assist system, kind of like the uh, precision approach path indicator you see at airports. I spent a lot of hours on it and got it working pretty decently well and only just as I started using it remembered that with a two and a half kilometer physics range in Kerbal Space Program. I would have, it would be visible for approximately 10 seconds of the approach, which means if I was on the wrong approach path, it wouldn't have been any help to me at all. So I scrapped all that work and went to kind of a simpler system, um, just using a series of flags as runway markers. But I decided to use a little bit of trig to eliminate um, sea level variance, your ground elevation. So this is what we're doing right now. We're getting pulling this little rover so we can mark out, kind of pace out some distance from the runway. Because when I'm bringing a shuttle back from orbit, which in my, this is just my sandbox save, um, in my career save when I get to shuttles I'm going to have to do this um, because my shuttles have no go around capability like the real one. They're just really fancy gliders. And so I'm rolling them back with no control input so I can get more directly I know I'm in a straight line behind it but this first flag is going to be my target flag and I'm still using the altitude of the runway the runway is 69 meters above sea level even though this flag is reading 64 I did all my math based on if the runway were much higher and the whole point of this is so I can come up with a good approach and glide path angle. This first flag we're setting out at four kilometers as um, a general approach flag. I can use just my jets and anything can use that as an approach flag. The shuttle is going to be a little further out because it's a higher velocity. But I'll show you the math. Um, if anyone, it's just basic, basic trigonometry, um, but it can make this a little more useful. And it's just basic right triangle uh, trig a squared plus b squared equals c squared and all that. Um, these are the actual numbers. I only have one meter variance between c and b at this distance so it's not that big of a deal but wanting to set up a six degree approach um, angle um, tangent of six degrees times 4,099 meters my linear distance gives me a necessary altitude to hit a six degree approach angle of approximately 430 meters. Meaning as I pass over that flag to get a six degree approach angle, which is a little steeper than commercial airliner, but it's, um, depending on terrain, some runways actually use that for commercial flights. Um, I have to be 430 meters altitude above that flag to have a six degree approach angle. And so I did a lot of the same math, not going to show that, but set a further flag out at 8.1 8 kilometers for uh, my space shuttle. And in order to have a 20 degree approach angle, which I just based that on the normal, sh the real shuttle, um, I've got to do some more flight testing on this to find out what is actually ideal for this one because it's got a, such a much better glide ratio than the actual space shuttle did. But 20 degree. Uh, nose angle means I have to be at approximately 3,000 meters above sea level when I get to this flag. And I am using ferrum. It's a little twitchy because I got extremely high dynamic air pressures on the aircraft at this time. Um, you have to be real ginger with it or you will start tearing things off. But the actual shuttle approach is easier than pretty much any of the other jets I'm used to flying. Um, you do only have one shot, but you're coming in pretty much oriented on the runway anyway, if you set your re-entry up correctly, which there's no reason you shouldn't. Kerbin has no axial tilt. tilt. And for the shuttle, the four kilometer flag doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, I can try and dive down to catch it so I can get the final six degree approach, but since I'm unpowered, I tend to try to keep a little more energy um, in the approach, which means coming in a little steeper. You can see that's a pretty uh, 
aggressive approach I've got there, about 170 meters a second. It's about a 300 mile an hour approach, give or take. A little hitching because I've got some jets parked down at the tarmac near the hangar. Uh, just because I'm practicing and experimenting with reusable and refueling aircraft. But yeah, and one of the biggest things that this uh, flag system aids in is it helps me know where the runway is through cloud cover because um, there's no instruments that really show you the runway in the game by itself. And gives you a nice long track to get yourself oriented if you're between if you can get yourself online by that last flag, your approach will be a lot easier. But this has been just a quick, fun little video to show a little fly aid I came up with over the weekend. So thanks for watching.